did willfully, unlawfully, deliberately, with premeditation and with malice of forethought, kill and murder Madison Mogan, a human being, by stabbing Madison Mogan from which she died. In violation of Idaho Code 18-4001, 4002, 4003, and 4004. The maximum penalty for this offense, if you were to plead guilty or be found guilty, is death or imprisonment for life. Do you understand? What evidence does law enforcement have on Brian Kohlberger? This case is still ongoing and it seems that Brian Kohlberger is the suspect number one in the Idaho murder case. But the evidence may not be as clear cut as the media may lead you to believe. As someone who has studied criminal science, and has experience as a law enforcement officer, we're going to take a real deep look at the evidence that was found and break down whether or not Kohlberger is innocent or guilty. There are some shocking details that's revealed at the end of this video. You do not want to miss it, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the video. After Koberger's arrest on December 30th, investigators confirmed his white Hyundai Elantra was seized as authorities searched his parents' home in Pennsylvania. Police say they have their man in the murder of four University of Idaho students. We're taking a look at some of the biggest pieces of evidence laid out in the probable cause affidavit and seeing where the defense might be able to poke some holes. Definitely. I'm assuming Definitely. that you are in favor of the death penalty yeah. for this Absolutely. defendant. If our daughters could switch places with him, and I'm saying Maddie is my daughter, um, we'd do it in a heartbeat if they could sit there and have three squares, and a place to live, and we could call them, we could write yeah. them letters, they could watch TV, they could do, get educated. I would love if Maddie yeah. and uh, Kaylee were doing life in prison right now. Yeah, so... At least we could talk to them. That's not... They'd be breathing. A punishment equivalent to being killed. That's victims, but Koberger's lawyer saying that he wishes to be quickly brought back here to Idaho so that he may be exonerated. On November 13th, 2022, four students were murdered at the University of Idaho at an off-campus sorority house. Three days after the murders, police held a press conference stating no murder weapon was found. A day later, they discovered the cause of death was from a quote-unquote big knife and that some of the victims had defensive wounds according to Lata County Coroner's Office. They began tracing the victim's final steps. On November 19th, police began to hunt for a suspect and began ruling out people who they believed were not involved in the crime. Things took a turn once people began to speculate about how the police were handling this case. After police reviewed camera footage, reports were put out that they were interested in speaking with a driver of a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra spotted near the crime scene. Fast forward to December 15th, the body cam footage of an Indiana police officer was released after he stopped the white Hyundai Elantra. Inside of that car was Brian Kohlberger along with his dad, who claimed to have been driving from Washington State University to their family home in Pennsylvania. On December 18th, surveillance footage was released of two of the murder victims, Kaylee and Madison, discussing a man named Adam hours before they were murdered. On December 20th, investigators continued to look for other Hyundai Elantras. A similar car was involved in a collision in Eugene, Idaho with no license plates and appeared to be abandoned. Police believe the owner of that vehicle was not related to the case. Between December 26th and December 29th, the FBI started to get involved and looked into that same Adam that Kaylee and Madison discussed in that video where they were walking home from the bar. On December 30th, just one to three days after investigating Adam, Brian was arrested and charged with four counts of first degree murder and the burglary of the horrific events on November 13th. So what evidence do they have on Brian Koberger? On January 5th, court documents were released. Dylan claimed she saw a clad figure of a 5'10 or taller male who was not very muscular and dressed in black clothing with bushy eyebrows. The latent footprint was located near Dylan's door during the second processing of the crime scene. They stated that the shoe print was similar to a van style shoe with a diamond shaped pattern on the bottom. DNA was also found on the knife sheath near Madison's body. This DNA was compared with the DNA recovered from the trash at Koberger's family residence in Pennsylvania. The police stated that the white sedan speeding away from the crime scene was similar to the one registered to Koberger, which was found at his parents' home. The police also stated that Koberger's phone number was pinged by a cell tower in the vicinity of the murders on November 13th. The police stated that Koberger must have taken this route. 
Approximately at 2.47 a.m., the phone stops reporting to the network and does not pick up a tower until 4.48 a.m. near Blaine, Idaho. Now, this is why the evidence is weak. The attorney representing the Idaho suspect is Ann Taylor. Now, if you guys don't know who Ann Taylor is, she is famous for previously overturning a murder conviction in the past after exposing false statements made by an Idaho police officer. This was the case of Jonathan Ellington, who allegedly used his car to run over a woman during the road rage incident. He was convicted to 25 years for the crime before having it overturned because of an Idaho police officer's false testimony. Idaho State Police stated that the officer did not lie, but that he perjured himself in court, then goes on to say he will be back to work shortly. Brian's attorney already sent a team of investigators to the Idaho murder house prior to Kohlberger's return to the state. Even ex-homicide detective and attorney Ted Williams said, the fact that Brian's attorney summoned private investigators to go through the scene leads me to believe that he is definitely going to mount a strong defense. There were also reports of Brian asking authorities if anyone else had been arrested at the time of his arrest in Pennsylvania. Chief of Moscow police refused to rule out whether or not the Idaho killer had an accomplice. Based on a phone call from a WSU student's mother, it was claimed her daughter was told that there was possibly three people involved in the murder. Wow. They were there. And they were there early on. And what I've been told by the FBI is that they're investigating everything I've told them. So I do think they do know. I do think they're going to make more arrests. Also, the video is unclear as to who's driving or whether the Elantra is the one that belongs to Brian Kohlberger. Remember the initial reports from police that described the car as a 2011 to 2013 Hyundai? Brian Kohlberger's car turned out to be a 2015 Hyundai Elantra. That's a grave error on the part of law enforcement. Now looking for a white 2011 to 2013 Hyundai Elantra. Police say tips and leads led investigators to look at additional information about the car being in the immediate area of King Street where the murders happened during the early morning hours of November 13th. Case, uh, but the evidence when it's viewed individually, you can attack that evidence as a defense attorney. If you take the DNA evidence that's recovered from the sheath, for instance, uh, I believe that to potentially be touch DNA, transfer DNA. The white Elantra can't be determined to be his white Elantra. I mean, there's circumstantial evidence indicating that it could potentially be his white Elantra, but there's certainly not direct evidence. The state of Idaho does not have hearsay. Dylan will have to testify to what she saw and heard that night. The roommates waited hours to call police with a very vague description of the suspect given by Dylan. Her credibility is very questionable. She claims she saw BK's bushy eyebrows, which is not enough evidence to profile someone in this case, especially after allegedly waiting eight hours to call the police. The latent footprint found at the scene is believed to be the suspect's, but law enforcement allegedly does not have the actual shoe or know its size. And it's believed to be a van style shoe footprint. However, that shoe is very popular among college kids. Now, Kohlberger's DNA was found on the knife sheath but not on any of the victims. It's also unclear as to what type of DNA or how his DNA got on the sheath. There's no murder weapon. Investigators believe that the knife was a cabal. However, according to the company that makes the knives, says Kohlberger's name is not in their system. Defense will argue that the evidence was planted, could have been stolen, or being that the home was occupied with many people, even when the roommates weren't home, it could have just genuinely been left there. Many people have speculated that the sheaf may have been connected to a former Army veteran named Brent Kapaka who attended WSU. Brian Kohlberger and Brent both drove white Elantras and had bushy eyebrows and allegedly they knew each other. SWAT was called after Brent allegedly threatened his roommates. Students began getting texts of a threat on campus. There was a seven hour standoff before tragically Brent was gunned down by police. A man who was killed during a SWAT standoff in Pullman last week. He was a U.S. Army veteran who had been battling PTSD for the past 16 years. Brent Kopaka was shot and killed on December 15th after Pullman police say he barricaded himself in his apartment. Officers first responded to the report of him threatening to kill his roommates. According to his family, Brent was a paratrooper in the U.S. Army and sustained a traumatic brain injury in combat while serving in Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan from 2005 to 2009. He was awarded the Purple Heart for his service. His family says those who knew Brent knew him as a loving, 
caring and very loyal friend. They add over the course of the past 16 years, Brent fought a courageous battle against PTSD, but in the end, he couldn't break free. They said, quote, please learn all you can about PTSD so you will have an understanding of the toll it takes on our veterans, their families, and their friends. Make sure your loved ones seek the help they need. However, his obituary stated that he died from a traumatic brain injury suffered at 16 years old, and police stated that this is not connected to the Idaho murder case. The cell phone towers are also not GPS location coordinates, which means that the evidence does not place Koberger at the scene of the crime. Cell towers can clear a radius within 20 miles, and Brian lived within 10 miles of the home. He can ping in that area at any time and probably has been pinging there since his attendance at Washington State University. He is allowed to be in that area just like anyone else. Brian's cell phone cutoff between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. does not tell us much about the crime. It's not a crime to cut your phone off or put it on airplane mode. They would have to prove that he never cuts his cell phone off in the past or bring up a pattern of behavior that shows that it is unusual for Brian to cut off his phone the way he did on November 13th. In the search warrant, they didn't really find much. Former FBI agent Jennifer Korfendaffer stated that she was surprised by how little hair was recorded on the search warrant record. They found a total of eight strands of hair. They also haven't mentioned who the hair belongs to. Also, multiple news outlets reported that Kohlberger followed Kaylee and Maddie on Instagram and was allegedly DMing them prior to the murders. They also reported that he possibly interacted with the victims during his visits at the Mad Greek restaurant in Idaho where Madison and Xana worked. The Mad Greek owner recently came out and debunked this whole theory. Also, it has never been verified by anyone that the Instagram account was even his. After his arrest, there have been multiple fake accounts that sprung up in his name. There is no motive. Law enforcement has yet to find a clear-cut motive. Many people online are speculating that this was an attack by an incel basically because BK allegedly couldn't get with any girls. But this has yet to be proven. It's also unclear why the two surviving roommates were left unharmed even though he allegedly passed one of their rooms at least three times. It's the state's responsibility to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. However, the evidence isn't that convincing. Brian's attorney waived his right to a speedy trial. The preliminary hearing is like a mini trial where the prosecution presents all of the evidence that exists against the defendant. If the judge concludes that there is a probable cause, then the evidence applies to Brian Koberger, then they will schedule a trial. However, if the judge decided not to, then they would dismiss the charges and lose the opportunity to bring these charges against him in the future. Ms. Taylor, have you had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Koberger about a uh, speedy preliminary hearing and setting this matter? Your Honor, I have. Um, we would ask the court to set the status hearing in a week or two to make a final determination. Okay. Why would Brian Koberger's attorney elect to skip a preliminary hearing? There are several reasons this would be done whether it's to delay the trial to gather evidence or information not being available at the current time. Brian's attorney requested the discovery evidence from the state, which will give her access to all of the state's evidence beforehand to possibly prevent the case from going to trial if they have a compelling defense. The request for discovery also includes exculpatory evidence, which is evidence that may actually benefit Brian. I think that the evidence that they have now is all circumstantial. Once the evidence testing come back from the stains that they found in the search warrant, then I'll have a full conclusion as far as we know now, this is all circumstantial evidence and independently can be debunked. What do you guys think? Get in the comment box, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace!